Great. Um, I am going to need some volunteers here in a little bit, um, but first I wanted to introduce a few people from our school nutrition department. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the nutrition education wellness coordinator. I'm a dietitian. I do menu planning, our fun food Fridays, and then health fairs and outreach um, from the school nutrition department. So today we've got our new chef, Alyssa Hitt. She's been here since November, so at some point I'll stop calling her new. <laughs> but she's new to us, and we love her. She's come up with some great ideas and helped me come up with some of these recipes today. And then we have an intern with us, Katie Carino, who is also an employee. She's interning to become a, a certified dietary manager, and we have just hired her on as one of our managers for this upcoming school year um, at one of our middle schools, at Nimitz Middle School. So we're very excited to have her. So they're kind of my helpers for today. Um, and if you would, what we're going to do is, you've got a bunch of recipes in front of you. There's two that we're making today. One I've already made, so we can kind of sample it because it does take a little bit longer to cook. Um, and then the other one we're going to make together. So the first one we're making is the slow cooker Asian chicken lettuce wraps. Now I sub turkey. Um, it's with ground turkey because that was kind of something different. We're doing chicken in the other one. Um, and I've pre-cooked a lot of these things, but most of these recipes that I've given you can be ready in about three hours um, from start to finish with everything raw. Um, so we're going to build um, this first recipe, the Crock-Pot Quinoa Chicken Primavera. It's got some really great things in it. It's chock full of protein. If you notice this one, did you print out the nutrient analysis with this one? Okay. This is just, I mean, it couldn't be any healthier. It's phenomenal. It has, I want to say, I think 20%. Oh, sorry, 50% of your daily allowance of protein or the daily required intake. So really you could cut out the chicken. Quinoa is such a protein rich grain. It's a great source of dietary fiber, which is good for our hearts, good for you know, regulation. Um, so there's some really great benefits to quinoa. It's also gluten free for anyone who's you know, a little bit cautious about that. We've got a bunch, we've got about five seats, six seats up front if y'all wanna come on up. So, Basically what we're going to do is build this recipe together. I'll take a couple of volunteers here in a minute. Um, everything is, are things you can do in a crock pot. And I am no chef. I've taken a few cooking classes, but I am all about easy. I hate having to chop things and spend an hour just prepping a meal. I am all about quick and done. So that's kind of what I wanted to bring to you today. Um, and then kind of in the middle while we're waiting for these things just to heat up a little bit more, um, the rest of the recipes that I've given you, we're going to kind of go through them and talk about some great substitutions. Talk about some things that would be, you know, based on your preference, your food allergies, or really just based on what you have in your pantry. I don't want you to ever see a recipe um, and say, oh, hoisin sauce, what in the world is that? I don't have that, I don't even know where to find that. Skip it. Unless you're baking, you probably don't need it, and that, you know, you can always Google um, things that you can substitute. So that's kind of what we're gonna talk about here in a little bit. Um, first, we're going to make our quinoa chicken uh, primavera. I've already cooked the diced, um, uh, it's kind of like a diced fajita meat. Still lean, but it has a little more flavor to it. And so I'm going to pull that over here. Anybody want to volunteer first? Yay, in the back, come on up. Her hands shot up. That is perfect. Okay, so my favorite thing, because I'm kind of lazy when it comes to cooking, crock pot liners. If you have ever had to soak and clean cheese out of a crock pot, these are a lifesaver. They're amazing. Not promoting any brand or anything, but just once I found these, it changed my life. And I make crock pot meals all the time now. So I've already got the diced chicken in there. Um, we're kind of going to go over the recipe together. Um, the first thing we're adding um, is the quinoa. And the great thing about this recipe is that you just put everything in ready to go. You don't have to cook anything separate. Um, you can even put the asparagus in there. The recipe says to saute it separately. If you want it a little bit softer, you can. My whole point of using a crock pot is to not have to do dishes. I don't want a bunch of extra pans and pots around the kitchen. So just put everything in there. Um, one thing to remember is that you know, if you are using um, something that's a little bit different, you know, say you're using a leaner meat, you want to adjust the cooking time, and that is where your food thermometer really comes in handy. The biggest reason we use a food thermometer is because it keeps us from undercooking our food and potentially getting a foodborne illness. Um, the other reason, which you know, Chef Alyssa can tell you, is because we don't want to overcook our food. We don't want the meat to be too hard or, you know, just, we don't want to affect the texture of it. We still want a good texture in our food. So that's a great thing to have with your crock pot. And a crock pot cooks pretty evenly, especially when you add some liquid to it. So that's a good thing to remember. 
So the quinoa, the recipe says you just add it in uncooked. For the sake of time today, since we're not going to be together for three hours, I know you're upset about that, but <laughs> I'm going to just uh, go ahead. I've got the, uh, the cooked quinoa. So since this is a little warm, I'm going to add this one in, but I'm going to let you add all the veggies. Does that work? That'll work all right. I hope, I'm holding you up here a lot longer than you thought, huh? <laughs> it's okay. Good. We've got a great dress on for camera, so it's perfect. <laughs> so I did just a ton of quinoa. And like I said, you really don't even need the chicken with this recipe. Now, if you're not a big fan of quinoa, don't know what quinoa is, just don't really want to try it, you can sub brown rice. Just do the same volume of brown rice if you think that might be a little bit easier for you. So I'm going to mix this in really nice. And then we're just going to add our veggies. So the first veggie we're going to add is, uh, actually we can do the chicken broth first, but it's okay. that's what we do. Really, that's the great thing about these recipes, you really can't mess them up, it's pretty hard. So we're going to add just a little bit of liquid. Because I've already cooked the quinoa, we don't really need much, but we do want a little bit of liquid just to have the, the quinoa absorb. Um, I don't measure things. I eyeball it. If you really want to use a measuring cup, go for it. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of extra liquid just to soften it up. That's all I'm doing here. Okay, so now we're going to add the veggies. We've got some gorgeous asparagus that I kind of chopped up, you know, into smaller bite-sized pieces. Add it all. All of it, just put it all in. And that's the neat thing too, if you're a little bit shy on chicken or don't have as much of something else, you can always double up on veggies. The goal of these is to really make a meal in one. I want all of my food groups in here. You know, just one meal and done, I don't want to have to make sides. That's the idea, the great thing about these crock pot meals. So now we're going to add the peas. Are these frozen? So the, I used frozen peas because they hold color a little bit better. And I've thawed them a little bit. They could probably have thawed a little bit more, but we're going to put this on high to kind of get them going. Okay. And stir it. Sorry. Yeah, and then stir it. You, we are fine. So then we're going to hold off on the parsley until the end. That's just kind of what we're going to chop it with. And same with the Parmesan cheese. We'll top that at the end. But my favorite thing about this recipe is pesto. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried making my own pesto once. I will never do it again. <laughs> Fortunately, there are plenty of brands at the store that are great. This is a reduced fat pesto, so it's made with a lower fat cheese. Um, Still a little bit higher in sodium, but we're not adding any salt to it, so we should be okay on sodium for this recipe. All right. That's perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I will let you scoop this in for me. Okay. Perfect, okay. So we're, like I said, we're gonna hold off on this, but we're gonna go ahead and add our seasonings and our garlic. I love garlic, but I know many of you don't, so I've got a decent amount, hopefully not too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. I'm gonna have you keep stirring for okay. me if you would. Okay. Um, then I've got kind of a seasoning blend, and I just you went with what the recipe said. So I used a little bit more, um, so I went up to about two teaspoons of uh, fresh pars of, um, dried parsley, uh, two teaspoons of thyme, and two teaspoons of bas basil. If you have, you know, kind of a recipe blend that you like or something different or know that, you know, I'm really not a big fan of rosemary or not a big fan of oregano, you can skip those things, kind of mix and match however you want. And the great thing about this recipe is you can kind of add more until you feel like you're satisfied with it. Perfect. So I'm going to add these herbs in. We're going to keep mixing that for me if you would. We're not adding any salt because there's some, even though i got low sodium uh, chicken stock, there's still some in there. There's some sodium, and then um, the cheese will have plenty of sodium. So there should still be a good sodium flavor without actually having to, having to add salt. I'm going to add just a little bit of pepper. And then the last thing we're going to do, I put you to work, didn't I? That's OK. We're going to do a squeeze of lemon, just a little bit. There we go. So that was really pretty simple. Um, and keep in mind, like I said, the quinoa, you would have put that in there with um, about four cups of chicken stock, and it would have just cooked on its own. It would have been, you know, just as seamless. You pop it in, and then a couple of hours, you know, three to four hours later, it's ready. Now, there are some crock pots if you're saying, well, you know, I, I get home from work at about six, from picking up kids, all of that. Um, 
some of these you can still set timers on or if you've got someone you know home at lunch um, there is this really cool like the the king of all crock pots it connects to your home Wi-Fi and you can turn it on from your phone just a very interesting little thing to think about so we're gonna plug this back in thank you so You're much welcome. let's give her a round of applause for being my banner white today that was perfect thank you so much okay so while that's cooking, what I want to do is kind of talk about some of the recipes that you have in your stack. Um, and then once everything's done, we're going to come up here and sample, which is obviously the best part. And we do have a lot of food today, so you should get some sizable samples. So let's talk about the first one in your pack. I believe mine is the same order as yours. If not, we'll, we'll just go with the flow. So soups are a great thing to make in a crock pot. You can make made from scratch chicken noodle. And by made from scratch, I mean you're kind of pulling things together and you're just not taking it out of a can. You don't need to make your own noodles or anything like that. You can get some great egg noodles, some chicken stock, dice up some chicken. If you ever, you know, when you get the, um, the rotisserie chicken from H-E-B or wherever you shop, if you ever have some of that leftover, that is a great thing to, you know, cut off every single piece and then put that in the crock pot the next night. It's already cooked, so that cuts down your crock pot cooking time by a lot. And then you can just kind of add in some veggies um, if you've got frozen veggies or canned veggies, um, frozen you just want to thaw the night before so that it's ready to go. Again, decreases your cooking time a little bit. Um, and then just kind of, you know, keep it simple. If there's, the biggest thing that I really want to impress on you today is if you don't have, you know, one of these ingredients, forget about it. Sub something else. If you're not a big fan of asparagus, put broccoli in that recipe. You know, find things to make it appealing, um, both in taste and, and appearance. Um, and then just really kind of sub in whatever you prefer. Make, you know, find any recipe online and make it your own. So the lemony chicken and orzo soup, this is one of my favorites. Orzo looks like a, a larger piece of rice, but it's actually a pasta. And this is something that if you don't have orzo, don't really want to buy it, um, you can easily sub in rice too and make it kind of like a chicken and rice soup. Um, a bunch of things have lemon. I didn't realize how much I liked lemon until I started looking at the recipes I had compiled. So if you don't like lemon, add lime, add something else. Um, but these are some really great recipes. So soups are just a really fun one, especially once it gets a little bit cooler. I know that's hard to think about right now with it being 100 degrees outside, but eventually it will be warmer. And soup in the crock pot is just an awesome way to go, especially on a weekend when you're home all day and have a little bit longer to let things stew. That's a perfect way to use it. So this next one, the herbed, uh, herbed chicken with beets and Brussels sprouts. This is one of my favorites. If you don't like beets or Brussels sprouts, switch them for something else. Um, a lot of ingredients in this one. Don't let the list of ingredients scare you. Just kind of look through it. This is a great one for the holidays too. Y'all, I think y'all may have the picture in black and white, but it is gorgeous. This is the herb chicken with beef and Brussels sprouts. So this is literally a meal in one. Everything is in this meal. That's all you need. No other side dishes. This is it. And that's perfect. So that's what I am all about. Um, then I've got the not so slow cooked chili chicken fajitas. I know in San Antonio not cooking fajitas on the grill is kind of sacrilege, but <laughs> if you're you know, just not wanting to fire up the grill or do something easy, or even if you have leftover fajita chicken, just to kind of mix it in with some veggies, and you can make tacos or lettuce wraps like we're going to make later today. But just kind of, I'm wanting to open your minds a little bit to the things that you can do with your crock pot that won't have you standing over the stove stirring for 30 minutes when you've gotten home from a long day of work. Because if you're anything like me, I really hate doing that. I like to just leave it, come stir it maybe every 30 minutes, once an hour, that's it. This one is a fun one. Um, it's slow cooked poached salmon uh, with lemon and fresh herbs. Lemon again. But you can add, um, I even put a Katie tip at the bottom. I usually add zucchini and red, pota red potatoes in it. Again, for meal in one. You just kind of add those uh, kind of towards the time you're done. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of salmon. My husband loves it, but you can easily switch a, you know, switch a white fish in there if you want a cleaner fish. Um, for some tilapia. That way you're still getting your omega-3 fatty acids, getting some fish each week. Um, but it's a little bit cleaner and it doesn't have the fishy taste that salmon sometimes does. So that's just something to kind of look at. And again, I love that these recipes list several different types of herbs. Don't feel like you always have to have fresh herbs. Fresh <laughs> herbs are expensive. Feel free to use dried herbs. 
kind of sub different things in um, and go from there. And this is just, again, I think I've got pictures of this. This is just a really pretty platter once you pull it out of the crock pot. This is something you could make when you have you know, people over. They would never know you just stuck it in a crock pot and left it alone all day. It's perfect. And I think that was the last one that I had given y'all. The last thing I wanted to talk about today, and I think we're doing okay on time. The last thing I wanted to talk about is kind of making your own seasoning blends at some point too. Um, pretty soon we're gonna do the slow cooker um, Asian turkey lettuce wrap, since I used ground turkey instead. But there's a lot of great little seasoning packets you can get um, in the grocery store. This is a lettuce wrap seasoning mix. It's got everything in here that you need. All you do is add it to the chicken, turkey, pork, whatever you're feeling like using. Um, and it just makes it really, really easy. But a lot of times these packets um, have too much sodium in it. So always kind of check the label. If you or someone in your house are really watching their sodium intake, um, this is something to think about. Maybe starting to make your own seasoning blends. Um, and this is something that if you want some more information after we're done, I'd be happy to talk to you about because I've got several recipes for like a Tex-Mex blend, just kind of making your own spices, um, your spice mixes. And that's a really great way to season your food without adding more sodium. So just something to keep in mind. Um, but does anybody have any questions before we start sampling? I know that's the favorite part um, about these recipes. No questions? OK. Well, I think we're going to go ahead then and uh, sample the slow cooker Asian chicken lettuce wraps. What we'll do is we've got a bunch of lettuce that we can pull out and have everyone sample. Um, be easier to maybe pass it out to people. Or have everyone come up? OK. Since we've got a big group today, that might be a little bit easier. So Katie, we did have a question. What's yes. the sodium recommendation intake? So day? the sodium recommendation per day is 2,300 milligrams. So to put that in context, that is one teaspoon. Mm -hmm. This much. That's it. <coughs> per day. Um, so that's why you'll see I have low sodium soy sauce. Um, because it's, and it's amazing how much sodium is, in, is hidden in our food, especially if you're eating a lot of processed food at restaurants. Sodium is a very cheap ingredient. And it also adds a lot of flavor without a lot of cost, so that's why you see it used so much. Um, and it's unreal, I think the average American gets about 3,500 to 4,500 milligrams of sodium in their diet a day on average. That's a lot more than we really need. It's basically making our kidneys, making our body work a lot harder than it needs to to get rid of that excess sodium that our bodies don't need. Um, and that can end up causing high blood pressure and lead to other things like that. So that's why sodium, you know, really watching your sodium is so important. Um, because this isn't a lot. I was at uh, a missions game, I think last year, and I said, you know, I haven't gotten a ballpark pickle in a long time. That sounds really good. Well, I looked at the back of the pickle, and it only had, you know, 860 milligrams of sodium. I was like, for a pickle, that's really pretty good. I was proud of myself, and I looked at the serving size, and it said one ninth of a pickle. <laughs> so keep in mind that that was my sodium allotment practically for the week, and that giant ballpark pickle. Granted, that would have been if I drank the juice too, but still, that was a lot of sodium. So there's so much sodium just hidden in different places, and, and all it takes really is just taking a little bit of time to kind of read the labels and just you know inform yourself of where the hidden sodium is. And cooking at home um, is one way to really cut out sodium, but if you're like me and don't have a lot of time in the evenings, crock pot meals are the way to go. Okay, so um, the first thing I wanted to do, you may set this over here if you don't mind, that way we can, sorry, move it. Got this. So we're going to build our lettuce wraps, and I wanted to show you just how great these look. Here's the scoop for this one. Perfect, thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Alyssa, did you have anything to add to your chef expertise? Mm -hmm. oh, you covered a lot of the okay. pieces there. Good. I bring her with me in case anybody has any really technical questions because usually I'm like, oh, just microwave it, it'll be fine. <laughs> she, can, she can give you a little bit more, more detail. So this is just a beautiful uh, mix. If you've got your recipe in front of you, and I'll read it for those of you that don't, um, it's, I put, I cut back on the turkey a little bit. I did um, one pound of ground turkey. The reason it says not ground chicken breast is because um, the cooking time will be different because it's leaner. Um, but feel free to you know, buy ground chicken breast because it is much leaner. It costs a little bit more because it's leaner. But it is leaner 
Um, and then just kind of use your food thermometer and double check to make sure things are getting cooked. Um, so then I added uh, a little bit of garlic minced, a red bell pepper finely chopped. I added a green bell pepper too, just to get some extra veggies in there. Um, some yellow onion and then hoisin sauce, which is one of the things I brought up earlier. I've never used this before. I didn't know what it was. They had it at my HEB. It was easy to find. And once I smelled it, I was like, oh, I have eaten that before, probably at you know, Asian restaurants. And the sodium's not terrible on it, it so I, I did cut back a little bit. I added a little bit of rice vinegar just to give it some good flavor. Um, and the unseasoned rice vinegar is sodium free, which is awesome. Vinegar doesn't have sodium. Same with balsamic vinegar. That's a great thing to add to food, but when you buy the soda, the, uh, any rice vinegar that says with garlic or seasoned, it's usually seasoned with salt. So just something to keep in mind. And then the lower sodium soy sauce, um, it has a lot less salt, but still soy sauce is really one of the biggest offenders of containing salt. So just something to keep in mind, and that you still want to use a little bit less of it. You don't want to, you know, just douse your, your sushi or, you know, pour a half cup of this in your serving of rice. A little too much. So just kind of be mindful of serving sizes. And then one of the neatest things that I added to this is diced water chestnuts. You've probably seen these in Asian blend veggies before. They're kind of like a little circular disc shaped white things. Um, they are a phenomenal source of fiber, and that's pretty much it. They're fiber. They're a great thing that, you know, just kind of goes through your body, gives you some extra fiber, a little bit of carb, because that's what fiber is, um, but no fat, 10 calories per serving. So it's, it's just a really great veggie that kind of can help you feel full a little bit longer. What was that again? These are water chestnuts, water chestnut. and you can find them in the Asian section. They're canned. These I bought already diced because, again, didn't want to chop. It was the same price as the whole ones. So yeah, one like last thing, I will bring these around. So you can see, um, they're actually they look kind of like sliced ginger. A golf ball. Um, yeah. Maybe a little bit smaller than a golf ball. Yeah. But they're white when they're peeled. Let's show you these. So these have, I've never seen them fresh. And frozen veggies. But they're just, they're, they're a really neat uh, vegetable that you can use. And they're really pretty healthy. Okay, so we'll bring some samples around for everybody, kind of go ahead and start tasting it. We've got plenty, um, and it's just, it's a really fun recipe to make that's super easy. I made this this morning, and it took me notes, I kind of, we have a, in our office we have a test kitchen because we're doing a lot of, you know, we do a lot of food testing for um, all of our school cafeterias. And so I, I got in this morning, kind of chopped a few things that I needed to, put things in, went back to my desk, worked for an hour, came back, stirred it, everything was fine. Went back to my desk for another hour, came back. That is my kind of low maintenance meal. It was perfect and just so seamless. So I did really like this. <laughs> The lettuce uh, on these, some of them we used um, iceberg lettuce where you just kind of cut it into little, um, little rounds. You can make them bigger if you want. And then for the others we used a great, uh, we just used romaine lettuce. So you've kind of got a longer, skinnier um, leaf. Um, you can use Boston lib, lib lettuce, which is a really nice, it's kind of got a buttery flavor to it almost. And that's a really great one to wrap, to do lettuce wraps with. Um, just kind of whatever your preference is. Try different things. And of course, you can use corner flour tortillas with this recipe too. Uh, this is just a little bit healthier option. Okay, how are we doing on time? Yeah. 
think it's kind of lukewarm, but everything in it's cooked. So. Okay. So now we've got our quinoa chicken primavera. And the last thing we're going to do to it is top it with some parsley. Just a little bit of parsley to give it some great green color. The reason you add parsley at the end, and same with most of your fresh herbs, if you add it too early in the cooking process, it turns an ugly brown if it heats too much. So you want to add your herbs a little bit later. And Alyssa could probably explain better why that happens, but I just know that I don't want ugly brown herbs in my, in my food. So you add them right at the end, right before you serve. Dried herbs have to be rehydrated. So that's why you add them in the beginning. They provide a lot more flavor if you use dried herbs. Fresh herbs provide freshness. They provide color, they provide um, a little bit of texture, integrity, things like that. So it just depends on what you're going for. The pesto has nuts, right? The pesto, oh, so the pesto does have pine nuts in it. So if someone's allergic, anybody's allergic to nuts. So But there's no nuts in the uh, lettuce wrap. Probably should have started with that. Very sorry. I do all of our the special diets in our school. You would think I would have started with that. But everyone seems to be breathing okay, so that's a good sign. Good. I've got thumbs up in the back. Okay. So I'm just going to add some Parmesan cheese to this. It makes it nice and sticky. And the cool thing is, if it gets too sticky, you can just add some more chicken broth. You can also add water. You really don't have to do chicken broth. It just gives it a little bit more flavor because quinoa can be kind of bland. There's really not much flavor to it at all. And so that's a great way to give it just a little bit of extra flavor um, to the meal. Yes. And so this, the quinoa chicken primavera, it's warm, it's not hot, but everything that needed to be cooked beforehand was cooked thoroughly. So just so you know, 30 minutes wasn't <laughs> quite enough time to warm everything up perfectly, but it is safe to eat. Does everybody have a spoon too? I'll let you start. Give them more. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. And so this is just you know another great meal in one that you can kind of put together um, quickly and and it's got so much great color. It's a lot of green in it. But you could easily substitute, say, you know, I really, I'm not a big fan of putting peas in things. Peas seem to find their way into so many different casseroles. And I've never been a huge, I don't mind peas on their own, but I've never been a big fan of peas mixed in. So if that's something you're thinking, you know, I want to swap this out or put red bell pepper, maybe even make it spicy. And same with the lettuce wraps. I just put bell pepper in this because I know some people aren't a big fan of super spicy food, but you could easily add jalapeno, serrano, um, maybe some Thai chilies if you're, you know, really wanting something spicy <laughs> and give it some good flavor. All right, so as you're getting your plate, does anybody have any questions about anything we went over today? Some more? Yeah. Okay, well, thank you all so much. I hope you enjoy the samples, and then I'll be here for about 15 minutes if anybody wants to chat with me afterwards.